All right, let's take it over to the Bills side. They give up a seventh round pick in what 2020 to get? Yeah, not even 19. It's not even a real pick. They give up nothing. <laughs> it's not even a real pick. To get a former first round pick in right. Corey Coleman. How you guys feeling about uh They're playing Dynasty League football. Right. How you yeah. how you feeling about Corey Coleman? I don't even think you can get Corey Coleman for a seventh in, in, <laughs> in Dynasty. <laughs> um, I mean I, I saw this tweet from Pat Thorman at Pat underscore Thor- Thorman and it basically summed up everything that I was kind of thinking in, in a much better uh, <laughs> shorter manner. There's no original thoughts. Right. <laughs> um, so he basically was saying how listed off the quarterbacks that Corey Coleman had had. He had Kaiser RG three. He had the game amounts next to these guys, but I didn't write that down. Kaiser RG three Kessler McCown um, and then some combination of McCown and Kessler and throughout some other games. And in the two full games with McCown, who out of these guys, RG3 was a shell of himself when he was playing with the Browns. Since looked half decent in the beginning of the whole game. <laughs> um, but he had two full games with McCown. He came away with 13 targets, eight receptions, 142 yards, and three touchdowns playing with an actual NFL quarterback who went over to the Jets last year and, and had a great year made some jets very relevant on the team. Um, he has a cup. Um, Corey Coleman has a couple of in- injuries that were pretty fluky um, and a QB clown car on a team that went one thirty one, which is basically a circus and a is labeled Q- QB clown car. and is labeled as a bust and sold for peanuts was essentially his, his tweet. And I think that's just, that's absolutely 100% perfect because yeah. Corey Coleman has had flashes of being out there, and we just talked about how there's flashes in the pan all the time of guys that look good and doing this. And maybe Corey Coleman will never end up panning out, but there's been some good stuff from Corey Coleman on tape, and and he just he has had some bad injuries, and right, they were causing him to miss big chunks of time, right. and it was the it was a broken hand, right, and he he doesn't have a ton of catches on his record, but I mean when you watch him, he's easily getting behind defenders. He's a big play waiting to happen. That comeback route is very hard to defend because he's his metrics are off the charts. He's a four four two dude with all the burst and agility that you could ever right. want in a player. He's going into his third year. This is definitely a less crowded receiving room uh, than where he was at, albeit probably a less desirable QB situation. But he's not playing next to Josh Gordon and Jarvis Landry. He's, right. He's got Kelvin Benjamin and Zay Jones. Right. So it's definitely looking up for him. He needed a fresh start. The he's, Browns, ham- he's got a hamstring injury that he's he's a little tight up right now. So he we'll does see get how some. That, he's he he's to had go with those broken issues. hands. He's got some some tissue issues. And the Browns had some trouble with him off the field. He he got he was hanging out with Kenny Britt, getting getting sent home for missing curfew, and you know, I mean, for them to ship him off for a seventh round pick after spending a first round pick on him, obviously it's not the same regime that drafted him. Something another, wasn't going another well Another Sashi Brown guy who got drafted on metrics and shipped out by John Dorsey. <laughs> yeah, well, solid. Well, point. like you said, the flashes in the pan and stuff, and we, I think we've gone through some Corey Coleman numbers on here before, but like last year. You know, terrible season for, by all accounts, 23 catches. But 70%, 69.5% of those catches were in three games. First game of the season, 5 for 53 in a touch. Next game gets hurt. Comes back when he think we think he's healthy, 6 for 80, and banged up or not, doesn't do some things. And then week 14, 5 for 60 in a touch. Like, that's literally... 70% of his catches for the entire year in three games. Mm-hmm. And th- those are professional football stats in three games. Like you said, the quarterback carousel that he's had, not his fault. Most of that was Kaiser last year. And you said Pat Thorman came with a tweet. Somebody else came with a tweet saying, I just wanted to look and see his catch rate was ridiculously low. Did you see that tweet? Mm-mm. Somebody put out a video that shows the footballs that he was trying to catch. And he was like, these were only – he was like, I wanted to put together a video of – to see how bad it was for Corey Coleman trying to catch these balls. What the catch rate isn't necessarily the receiver's fault. Right. Take somebody has to throw the ball. And he and basically the tweet was, look at this, look at this minute and thirty second video I put together. It was through six quarters of football. And these are passes that are bouncing off the ground. These are passes that are way too high and he jumps up, almost gets hurt trying to, you know, land, you know, just mm-hmm. to your point when the quarterback clown car carousel, <laughs> like, you know, Pat Thorman's point, what, but I, right. I had similar sentiments. He just summed it up much better than. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. That's to, why to, you're not as good at Twitter. You're right. To piggyback Mr. Thorman there, an all time great. Like, yes, he, he's nobody's throwing in the football 
when he got a little bit of a professional quarterback, the same same guy that was throwing all those passes to, to Pryor, you know, two years ago, um, he had a couple of good games mm-hmm. and just like. So, yes, I think that Corey Coleman's getting a bad rap here, and I think that right now this stock is plummeting. It's, it's heading to zero, and to, to me, there's no reason not to pick him up on the super cheap. Obviously, the landing spot could have been a lot better. It's Buffalo Bills. Oh, I was waiting for him to get traded, and then he just goes to the Bills, and I'm like, man. Yeah, but the sky is it, only up from here for the Bills as well, you know, so uh, because he's pretty I mean, they much. They didn't go winless last year. No, they didn't go winless, but they, they actually made the playoffs. But I'm saying, yeah, but like as far as we wanted to talk about the Browns first. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how bad it is. Uh, even though the Browns, the, the the Bills made the play, they made the playoffs, but right, the, Tyler Boyd put them in the playoffs. There's so they, much hype. They around, made the playoffs, but one, one, get one play at the end of the season for there's the, so for much the hype Bengals, around the, put them in the playoffs. Around the Browns right now, it doesn't feel like they've been so bad for so long, even though they have been. And then there's so much, just everybody's just taking doo-doos on the bills right now and sure whatever the hell's going on over there and they're acting like they didn't make the playoffs last year or regardless if they made the playoffs or not like the the bills were a lot better of a football team than anybody thought they were going to be last year absolutely so absolutely i mean but then it, you ship off the quarterback who was basically the stabilizer over right there. and then I, one of the reasons so, I mean, the, hate, not, the hate's piling up is because they traded up didn't take rosen like mm-hmm. that's the thing. That's the reason the hate's piling up because you take a guy who's not even accurate and jo- Josh Allen, who obviously has the physical tools to be an NFL quarterback, but you pass up the surgeon and the potential. You know, Josh Rosen, who's out there, you know, mentally all in and knows where to go with the ball. For, and yeah, you got the cold weather and the snow games and all that stuff. But like literally, they got a guy that has a hundred mile an hour arm, but nowhere to put it. You know. Yeah. So. That's that's we'll, we'll that's see if another that's a fact thing. or not. Yeah, well, I mean, that's another thing. It's it's definitely it's I w- I want to call it a, I won't people, call it a fact. People have already basically la- just like Corey Coleman's getting labeled as a bust right now. Josh Allen hasn't even played a down in the NFL, and he's pretty much already labeled as a bust. Majority of people out there want to just throw him under the bus like he isn't going to be any good at all. And because he had some inaccurate times in college, there's no way that he could possibly ever be an NFL quarterback. And I just don't know if that's true or not. I have no idea. I've never I haven't seen much Josh Allen. I don't know what he's doing in camp. If you read what's going on in camp, half the people are saying he's so bad. Other people are saying he is clearly the best looking quarterback in that camp. And he, he has looked really good at times. I've read all. I've read both sides of that. I saw there was somebody. But I think it's just people pushing their own narrative. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. But somebody put out some type of stat, and obviously you can twist the numbers however you like. His completion percentage and a, a right. level of erraticness in college is sure. maybe they've never even put together like a Pro Bowl quarterback with those types of stats coming out of college, something like that. Like it's potentially never, n- never been a seriously good quarterback with as inaccurate as he was in college, something like that. You know, there are people pushing their narrative with any kind of numbers they want to use. You know, it's just the Bills, yes, they made the playoffs, but they they look like they felt like some things have been going on that it's just it's just like you said, it's it's poo poo. It's people are doo dooing on the Bills. Yeah. Like, much like they were the Jets this time last year. And, you know, it's to be determined how bad it really is, but like I was saying about the Corey Coleman part, like the expectations are zero for the Bills for anybody that's not a Bills fan. For me, the outside looking in, the expectations are very, very down. Yeah. For the offense as a whole, for the team as a whole, yeah. I mean, they made the playoffs, but I would be willing to bet a lot that they don't go back to the playoffs this year. Five out of sure. the twelve playoff teams every year don't make it back. That's you know, those are kind of the dead set numbers for the NFL. It's you the know. Bills were so desperate to get rid of Tyrod that they played Nathan Peterman for a game. Thought yeah, that was a good idea. Yeah, on the road versus Chargers. Anyway, idiots. I, I don't know. I'm just neither. I don't know if Josh Allen's going to be any good. I don't know if AJ McCarron's any good. I, I don't know any of that stuff. Um, it obviously has some effect on Corey Coleman, but I think I'm with you. Like I'm buying whatever. If Corey Coleman's super low and somebody wants to get rid of him, I'm buying him. I mean, it's Zay Jones and it's Kelvin Benjamin, who I don't love Kelvin Benjamin either. Um, but he's super cheap right now because he's on the bills and because, you know, what is, what have you done for me lately? Really? Right. right. If you do it, 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 all of this, every bit of this, the value, it all comes out of expectations and you're disappointed when you pay up for somebody and you don't get what you get. But if you're, what it's going to cost you to get Corey Coleman right now is peanuts. Right. And like, you know, my short bench FFPC leagues, I probably don't even know if I can even 
fit Corey Coleman on sure. that short bench. But like, if I can find a way in any circumstance to find Corey Coleman on my bench, I'm going to be happy about it. Cause I'm going to acquire him for peanuts. And when the five for 62 and a touch guy comes back around, sure. you're going to, you, you will, there's, there's, like I said, the stock's headed towards zero. Sometimes you figure out that that company, there's no turning around and you don't want to be the guy that bought it before it gets to zero. But if it's $2, how much can you really lose? Right. You don't want to buy it at fifty when it's coming from a hundred headed to zero. You don't want to buy on the Toys R Us. You don't want to. You don't want to buy on the Sears. Them boys are out of here, you know. But sometimes Sears they, is in a rebrand. Yeah, right. mom and pop they, shops. They coming back around. So I mean, Corey Coleman. Mm, we'll see how it goes. But for what you're going to pay for him right now, right. Zero, well, maybe know? Josh Allen's the best quarterback out of all these quarterbacks. It it could happen. You, know, you, you just there's no way of telling. There's no way of knowing which. And let's face it, plenty of fantasy points have come to wide receivers with bad quarterbacks. Sure. I mean, the 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 bad quarterbacks, they're the ones that get you down 28 to nothing and you got to throw it the entire yeah. third, you know, third and fourth quarter, nothing but pass attempts. That you know, that's Blake, Blake Bortles was that's what he was a couple years back. 